Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Pinstripe Perspective, our look here at SNY at the Yankees farm system. I'm Sweeney Murdy, joined as always by my co-host, Connor Foley. We have a couple of really good interviews lined up for you on this episode. We'll talk to Yankees special assistant to the general manager, Nick Swisher, and one of the Yankees top outfield prospects, Everson Pereira. Connor, it's a shame it's not more fun to talk to a guy like Nick Swisher. Yeah, you really wish that he'd just kind of loosen up and show his personality, but he had a lot to say, so let's get right to Nick. And now we welcome in, wait, let me double check his title. I think it is officially special assistant in charge of awesomeness. Let's finish it. Is that, is that the title? Did I get that? Right? You know what, bro? If it's not, we need to make a name change because that job title is way cooler than mine, bro, for sure. Uh, Yankee special assistant. He bounces around the minor league system. He's got a good handle on what we talk about here on Pinstripe Perspective. So, Nick, thanks for joining us for a couple of minutes today. Oh, man, you got it, man. Anything for you, brother, no doubt. So, Nick, the last team you actually played with was the Rail Riders in 2016, and there were some pretty notable names on that team. I think your last game you batted behind Ben Gamble, in front of Aaron Judge and Gary Sanchez, and Chad Green was on the mound. Severino, Luis Severino was also on that team. Tyler Austin, it was a lot of people. So what was that experience like, and how did it kind of shape what you do now? It was a little bit of bittersweet, right? Um, it was sweet in the sense of, wow, you know, I'm brought back to the organization that means so much to me. And it's like family to me. And they trust me enough to be around their young guys to teach them the Yankee way. That was the sweet part. The bitter part was, you know, it's coming to an end. And I guess, you know, when you're going through as, through that as an individual, you don't really know how you're going to react because you are a competitor. You want to win. You want to compete. You want to get back to the big leagues. But then again, you know, I guess you kind of look at you kind of look at the realisticness of that happening. And for myself, I think I kind of came up upon that part of my career where, you know, I think this is the end. And so I think when you look at it from that perspective, now you figure out how you want to go out. How you want to go out? Do you want to go out kicking and screaming? Or do you want to be the best human being possible and try and make a huge impact on these young kids and teach them some of the things that the veterans in your world had taught you, right? Just keep passing it down, right? Leave it better than when you got there. All right, so let's get into some of the guys that you had a chance to see as you travel around each of the minor league teams. Jason Dominguez is starting to show a lot of the tools and things that make him an exciting prospect and he's really taken off. As you talk to Jason Dominguez and you see him switch hitter, you know, right up your alley, what are some of the things that excite you about what he can be by the end of this season? You gotta look at this uh, and, and give it a little perspective. This is the first season. These are the first games our guys ever really played. So to be able to get him on the field on an everyday base this year has been absolutely fantastic. And what you're noticing is an upward trend, right? There for a minute, when you're over at Himes facility all the time, you know, the Florida Complex League, you know, it's very monotonous, right? The competition of things, it's up until you get over to the Tampa Tarpons to where you really understand like, okay, we're traveling to games, we're playing every single day. It's not necessarily all about the training of things, but more the results of things. I feel like Jason's growing up. Listen, this kid should be a freshman or a sophomore in college right now. So if you put that in perspective as well, he's built like an absolute man. He's got light tower power. His average is climbing. He's stealing bases. He's getting better jumps in the outfield. The more reps he gets, the better he's going to be. I think his swing decisions are getting better. His contact quality is double what it was last year. So if you're looking at all the metrics of things, but we're, we're geeked. I mean, we're so excited. Nick, let's go Anthony Volpe. What was your first impression of him when he drafted out of high school in New Jersey? And then what he was able to do last year to kind of just launch himself onto the prospect radar. He's that baby face, you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't believe it. our number one prospect looked like he was 14 years old. He's starting to build into his own body, which is great. I think he's 10 pounds heavier now than he was last year. But once again, we're talking about early 20s, right? 19, 20, 21 years old. So to be able to be, to see the growth of what he's doing, maybe this hasn't been the start that he's liked, but it's coming. The tools, the work ethic, the will, the want, the love of being a New York Yankee, which is something I hold in the highest regard. 
He wants to be here. He wants to be our, our shortstop for the next 100 years. I mean, come on, he's a Jersey kid, right? Like, who wouldn't <laughs> want to play for the Bombers? Nick, there are two guys who got off to pretty good starts this year, Austin Wells and Ken Waldachuk. What do you like about these two guys? You know, if you look at Austin Wells, he's still got his caterpillar mustache, bro. He, I mean, he looks like a catcher, right? Like, he looks like he should be behind the plate. And I think one of the things that I really appreciate about his game, number one, is his overall leadership. He is an absolute general behind the plate. But something else I really appreciate is his overall plate discipline, his understanding of the strike zone. And maybe he got that in college, maybe he got that in high school. But either way, when someone walks to the plate and is confident and is calm and can spit on those pitches this far off the outside part of the plate at early ages, for me, that catches my eyes. And Austin Wells has always had great plate discipline, and that's what's going to get him to the next level. And how about Ken Waldachuk? Left-handed, got that devastating slider, upward fastball, really gets some good ride on that. I mean, Kenny's right there knocking on the door. In my mind, I think he could come up and help this team at some point this year. Who are some other guys maybe who you've got your eye on that people should know about? Ah, bro, I, I got a list. I wrote a list down <laughs> here, right? You came prepared, Hayden, huh? Yeah, right? Hayden Wisniewski, bro, he's nasty, right? Elijah Dunham, big cheese. Josh Bro, our catcher, absolutely fantastic. All up. As Waldo Cabrera in AAA this year, unbelievable switch hitter, had an unbelievably awesome last year. This year, gotten off to a little bit of a slow start, but I think that could be that jump up to AAA as well. Uh, Oswald Peraza, right? I mean, talk about him and Volpe being that maybe second base shortstop combination for a long time. That could be something really, really good. Somebody down for the Tampa Tarpons, you need to keep your eye on our big first baseman, Anthony Garcia, hitting some absolute moonshots these days. Check his exit velocity. It will absolutely blow your mind. Everson Pereira as well, just jumped himself onto the 40 man. He's been amazing. And my last guy I got is Randy Vasquez for our Somerset Patriots, right-handed pitchers. Dudes are hitting 175 off that guy right now. He's got a chance to come up and help us sometime soon as well. Wow, it sounds like you're diving headlong into this special assistant role. You're really diving into who the, and, and teaching these guys how to be Yankees. And I listen, if, if I have anything to do about it, I will try to get that of awesomeness title. No, yeah, let's go, man, let's go. I think we're gonna put that at the bottom of the screen. Special assistant in, tra in charge of awesomeness will be your Sounds official great, title bro. on the show. Sound good? Yes, sir, it sounds amazing, man. Listen, bro, the fact that I'm able to, you know, have such a say and work with these young kids, something I take near and dear to my heart, man. I want these guys to succeed. I want us to succeed. And it's about time we brought number 28 back to the Bronx, bro. So we're doing our part for sure. Yeah, what a fun conversation with Nick Swisher. I think I need a cup of decaf after that one. Uh, one of the prospects you heard him talk about was Everson Pereira, who first jumped to my attention as a 17-year-old to Pulaski a few years ago. He's now at High Hudson Valley. I had a chance to check in with him a couple weeks earlier. What do you think was key for you hitting last season? I don't know. I just, I just think last year make a good contact to the middle of the middle of the field. And just thinking, take a good pitch and good swing. Just that one. I just, I don't, I don't take it too much last year. Your first year in pro ball. You're 17 years old and you're in Pulaski, Virginia. Yeah. That's a hard experience for anybody, I think, let alone somebody coming from Venezuela. What was that experience like for you? That's different to my first year. That's the, that's different culture for me, and that's that's a good experience too because. I just say with my with my teammates, he that's, the other players have like a more year to me, so he a lot of people help me a lot. So the 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 lead is too hard too. So that that, that was, that's a good experience for me. I like I like my first year. How's this early season going for you? What what do you like so far? I like that's my first long season. Uh, I mean. That's a little different for me because I never started with the, with the cold. The weather is super mm -hmm. hard for me in the first game. But right now, I just want to thank and help my team and keep, they got take more experience. Take more experience. When you finally get to the New York Yankees, it's about 40 degrees out. Is it going to be okay? You going to be all right? Probably, probably I think it's like a 
super excited. I don't know, I don't think it might be with him, but <laughs> I just go to play baseball. Everson Pereira having a good year at High A Hudson Valley, hoping to move up in the system. And Connor, one of the guys who did move up in the system is our look at an alternate angle right now. Will Warren, one of the Yankees' better pitching prospects, has already found himself jumped up early this season. Yeah, anytime you can reach double A the year after you get drafted, you're doing something right. And Will Warren's a guy that the Yankees took in the eighth round out of southeastern Louisiana. Not really a big name. Nobody really knew about him, but the Yankees liked some velocity and some numbers on his pitches and stuff like that. And basically what they've been able to do is, you know, kind of create another really good pitching prospect for their system. Not exactly out of thin air, but kind of out of thin air. So I talked to Joe Vasile, who's the broadcaster for the Hudson Valley Renegades. I said, what? So one thing that people need to know about this guy, he said to a man, the players said he was the nastiest guy they faced in spring training games. So that's kind of high praise considering some of the arms that the hitters at that level would be facing at that time. We'll be paying attention to him as he hits double A Somerset now and hopefully moving his way up the Yankees system. Fun episode with Nick Swisher. Thanks to him. Thanks to Everson Pereira. Hope you continue to check out Pinstroke Perspective here on SNY.TV. I'm Sweeney Murdy. He's Connor Foley. Thanks for watching.